What's up guys? Welcome to part four of the Nexus 10 versus Surface tablet. Now, if you're just tuning in, I highly recommend you go down below and look at those links and start with part one. In round four, we're going to be talking about operating systems and applications. Now, I'm not going to go really in depth. If you guys saw my Android versus iOS series, you'll note that I spent over an hour trying to compare both operating systems and I could honestly say I was only halfway done. So I'm going to just talk about the basics, certain things that, you know, most people are going to use settings and stuff like that. So without further ado, let's get started. So what makes these devices really different is their operating system. The Nexus 10 is running Android 4.2 Jelly Bean and you have the Microsoft Surface tablet running Windows 8 RT. And like I said earlier, I'm not going to go through all of the features. I'm just going to show you some of the basic things that you can expect with both operating systems. Now the first thing we'll do is look at the unlock screens or lock screens, however you want to call it and see that there are some similarities. For example, both devices are showing the time and date. Both devices are showing the Wi-Fi strength and battery. There it is up there. And something that you'll note on the surface is that it's showing me that I have 17 unread emails, okay? Now over here, I don't have that, but however, I do have widgets. This is something new in Android 4.2. As you can see, those are my 17 unread emails and I can easily jump right into a specific email and there's something that just happened. I'm glad that kind of happened in the video. Somebody loves how I did something, but this is a notification that you don't get over here with the uh, Surface tablet. You don't get these types of notifications like you saw right now. And if I had the tablet off, you will notice that I also get an LED notification. So just a little FYI, I know that's a hardware thing, but it's also tied into the software. So let's go ahead and unlock both of these devices and as you can see there this is where things really really change now we're on the home screen of both devices now the way Windows 8 handles notifications is really different on Android as you saw earlier you get these notifications up here and you can pull down to see and read that message with Windows 8 you get these live tiles that you kind of have to pay attention and always be on the lookout to see if anything has changed. So for example, if I'm web browsing and let's say somebody sends me a Facebook message, it will not let me know that I have a message. I would have to go back home and see, oh look, social, somebody left me a message. With Android, if I'm web browsing, this notification or status bar up here, like as you see right now, that it just happened coincidentally, um, as I'm browsing the web, I could see, oh, somebody mentioned or said something on my Google Plus. I can go down here and quickly jump to that uh, session. And as you can see, oh, it looks like people are talking about it. Now let's talk about customization on both devices. Android, you have the ability to do just about anything. Anything is really possible with it. And I can honestly say no two devices are the same. With Windows 8, you get these, like I said, live tiles that the only true or the only customization that you can do is, for example, label or categorize certain sections. For example, I have my shopping over here, my games. So you're able to categor categorize your apps. Now, I'm not saying that this is bad and this is better or vice versa. Obviously, if you look at the iPad, it's the most popular selling tablet and all it does is it has a bunch of rows of icons. But this is not about Apple, I'm just letting you know sometimes people like this simplicity. So I'm just here to provide you this information. So as far as customization goes, this is what you see here is pretty much what you get. Now, Android, you can add widgets, live wallpapers, you can really make it your own, customize, you know, if you don't want this Google search bar, you can add a new ROM and really, really tweak it and make it your own. However, if you really don't care about that and you just want something simple like you see here where everything is, you could say, organized, this might be the way to go. So I kind of want to talk about some strengths on both devices and I'm not going to go through every single thing, but I'm just going to kind of point some out. So for example, one of the things that Android does really well is the ability to just integrate with applications in general. So for example, I'm on this website to advance and let's say I wanted to share this with somebody. I can easily share this with whatever application I have installed, literally. And that's usually the case with all of the apps. The ability that it integrates with the operating system is really well. Over here, I can't really do that. And for example, even on my social drive that I have here, let's say I wanted to add my Google Plus account, I really can't. I would have to see what's new. And these are all the 
social networks that I can do, which is Microsoft, Facebook, sorry guys, there it is, Microsoft, Facebook, Gmail, Skype, and if I wanted to add another account, let's say G, uh, Google+, Plus, I can't, that's it. Uh, these are the only ones I can add. So that integration or the ability to add uh, to just about any type of application is really something that Android shines very well. Now something that you might like on the Surface tablet is that it has a desktop mode. The desktop mode is something that we are familiar with for those of you that use Windows uh, operating system. This is where you can see, for example, your file system. You can see your documents. You can you know, jump into the drive. Let's go to desktop, computer. Let's see what's on my C drive. Go ahead and uh, click on that. There it is, 12.4 gigabytes free. I can see what's in the heart of the operating system. You can sort of do that here with Android. You can get a file manager, but this is something that's pretty nice. And of course, something else is that you have the ability to use Excel, Word. So some of these, you know, you're talking about true Microsoft Word, the whole suite, you know, Note. Um, this is something that might appeal to you if you're a heavy user on Excel and you like to crunch numbers. So you get basically the one of the or you could say the full version of it go ahead and show you guys blank workbook so there you go I mean this is really really nice if this is what you do so once again I'm kinda of just showing you guys uh, some of the key features on both devices that make them different and unique so another key feature that I want to talk about is the UI of Windows 8 RT and what I mean by that is if you're already invested in the Microsoft ecosystem this could be a good thing as you know, this looks very similar to Windows 8. So if you're already a Windows 8 user, this familiar feel, or at least this is what Microsoft wants, is so that whatever you're using, whether it's Xbox 360, Windows 8, or your Surface tablet, you have this familiar feel. So this could be a very good thing or a plus on the uh, Surface tablet if you're already invested in that ecosystem. Similar to Apple if you have a uh, you know, an iPad and a MacBook Pro and all of the different products. So this could be geared to somebody who really likes Microsoft. Now on Android, one of the things that I could say is a really key feature on the UI is the soft keys. Uh, something that, for example, if I hold the tablet over here, let me say on the Microsoft one, if let's say I use an Internet Explorer, sorry, and I have to, let's say, go back to my home, I would have to push over here rather than down here. So the ability that this automatically changes, show you guys real quick, I'll just kind of get that out of the way. So now the soft keys are at the bottom. This is a really nice uh, feature that I wanted to highlight from the UI on Android. Also, one thing is how easy things are as in terms of like modifying things, for example, settings and you know brightness. It's just really almost, as they like to say, one click away, you know? In this case, we're not clicking anything, but you guys know what I mean. So the Android UI is very easy to use. It has, be, has become very polished. And once again, I think that, um, it's going to come down to a, a personal preference on both devices. Now let's talk about apps. Now as you guys know, the Android or Google Play Store has been out for a very long time, so of course you're gonna see a lot more applications on Android compared to Microsoft Surface. However, I think it's unfair to judge that because this doesn't have as many apps as the Nexus 10, that the Nexus 10 automatically wins. If that were the case, then the iPad would be the undisputed king because, of course, you guys know that the iPad has a ton of tablet-optimized apps. So, with that being said, I'm going to move on. However, if you are looking for a device that has a lot of apps, then, of course, you would pick the iPad, then the Nexus 10, then the Surface. Anyhow, one of the things that really disappointed me with the Microsoft Surface is, on the App Store, we're talking apps, is how expensive applications can be. Let's take a look at some new releases for games and just to get, just to give you guys an idea, let's look at, let's see, Angry Birds Space, $4.99. When you look at Angry Birds over here, it's free. Granted, yes, you're going to get advertisement, but $4.99, I mean, come on, not even the iPad version, which you guys can say it's proven because everybody or a lot of people use it, they don't even charge $4.99. So I think this is where Microsoft is really going to not attract a lot of people and I think this is where their app store is going to suffer greatly because of how expensive applications are. Uh, when you see Android, Android is known for a lot of free apps. Uh, even when you compare it to iOS, Apple, 
a lot of free apps here when iOS you have to pay for them so this is something that I would really consider if you're going to be buying a Surface tablet things are very very expensive so just jumping on board it's gonna cost you a pretty dime and I think this is going to be where the Surface tablet is going to suffer the most is not the fact that they're missing a lot of apps that can take time and grow that's what happened with Android that like I said just give it time but because everything is so expensive so another thing that I want to show you guys is the file size. Something that I've noticed that on the Surface tablet, things are a lot bigger. So for example, let's take a look at both of these apps, which are the same. You have Star Wars, the Angry Birds, and this is the HD version, which of course it's for or optimized for tablets. And you have Angry Birds Star Wars. Here you're looking at 40.7 megabytes compared to 32.51. And in some cases I've seen where it's almost 100 megabytes in difference. Now, you can see the price, $299 versus $499, but one thing I must say that I really like about the Surface tablet is that it gives you the ability to try the app. Now, I know Android has something similar, but it's only a 15-minute window of time compared to the Surface tablet, which pretty much gives you unlimited. So any of these paid apps, for example, if I wanted to play like this Hydro Thunder Hurricane, and there's my point of it being a very expensive app for you know 999 I can go ahead and just push on try and I can try it before buying so this is really nice and I must applaud uh, Microsoft for doing that and hopefully uh, Google can implement something similar where you can have the ability to try something for as long as you need and then if you're ready or once you're ready to buy you can go ahead and pull the trigger so now that round four is over, it is very difficult to judge. Why? Because it comes down to your personal choice, your personal preference. And as you guys know, prior to the Nexus 10, my tablet of choice has always been the iPad. Those of you that have followed me know that because to me, the iPad offered the best experience when it came to web browsing and applications. Now that has changed since the Nexus 10. But before the Nexus 10, I just felt that there was really no Android device 10 inch that really could compete with the iPad. So once again, it really comes down to choice. I didn't care about widgets, I didn't care about notifications. All I cared about was experience. I also feel that I'm not giving the Microsoft Surface tablet enough credit in really because things do work right out of the box. I have yet to have any errors. As a matter of fact, I've had a couple applications crash on the Nexus 10. Granted, it, it is running 4.2. Whatever you want to say, I have yet to have any problems with the Microsoft surface however I must declare a winner and I'm going to give it to the uh, Nexus 10 why because it is a much more mature operating system uh, the surface I feel that still needs some optimization tweaks remember it's the new kid on the block nothing wrong with that it's a great OS if you did not see my Microsoft surface review I highly recommend I'm leaving this video right here I'm also going to leave it down on that link to Go ahead and watch it. There's a lot of things, like I said, that work right out of the box. You know, you plug in your USB mouse and things just work. It's a great OS. And remember, it comes down to your choice. But because of the maturity, because really Android has come a long way, five years, there has to be a winner. And I'm going to pick the Nexus 10. Now, I know in round two it was a draw, but that was just because it was too close to call. But this one, we have the Nexus 10. Now, I'm not sure if you guys are looking down at my description, but I have the last test which is TB or to be determined now I want you guys to decide what you want me to do go ahead and send me a tweet go ahead and send me a Google Plus message I want you guys to decide I'm gonna pick several of you guys and I'm gonna post your tweet and whatever challenge it is I'm gonna do it except the drop test or anything that's going to damage the devices I'm not going to break these devices I don't have the money to spend to just throw them away or break them so let me know what you guys want to want to want to see. Uh, let me know if there's something, even if it's something before. I'm gonna go ahead and try and pick a whole bunch of you, and I want to I want to let you guys decide the video and uh, pick from your guys's um, uh, posts. So anyhow, guys, thanks again for watching. If you guys want to see more of these more of these videos, make sure to you subscribe. If you want to follow me on Google Plus Twitter, I've left those links down below. Once again, thanks again for watching. Adios. See you in my next video.